Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University. But this is not a Comic Book University video, so to speak. This is a Geek Fortress exclusive. You will not find this on YouTube. Now, I know that we like to do our little battles every so often, our versus battles, all right? But today, in honor of the WWE Royal Rumble coming out, I figured that we should do something just a little bit different. And since you may not know all of these characters, that's right, we're gonna do more than one character. You may not know who all these characters are. I figured a really quick explanation would be a nice thing. So I'm thinking to do a Royal Rumble for the Superman clones. All right. No, not all the clones because obviously Superman's going to win. That's an easy one. It's already happened. All right. But outside of the DC imprint, yes, most of these guys are from Marvel because pff, the most ripped off character ever. Right. Guys, first off, we have the Man of Steel himself. All right. Out of eight contenders, there's a battle royal. Superman, the Man of Steel himself. If you don't know him, you obviously have not read a comic in your life. It's not that big of a deal, but for the most part, you know who Superman is, right? Next, we're going to do Hyperion. Now, this is often considered the greatest of the Superman clones, the ripoffs, all right? Uh, originally of the Squadron, Squadron Supreme, uh, more specifically, the Squadron Sinister, and then later, the Squadron Supreme. He was just supposed to be an evil version of Superman that didn't look like Bizarro, and he wound up becoming beloved uh, under Mark Grunewald and the like. He is an absolutely amazing character with a backstory that I would say, even though Superman's is the original and it automatically gets props, the this story that he's got in itself is fantastic. Absolutely glorious, and his history, if you've never read the 12 issue miniseries, limited series of Squadron Supreme, you are seriously missing out. It's in trade paperback form. I would highly recommend it. So we're gonna put Hyperion. Just figured the exact same powers as Superman. He's got atomic vision instead of heat vision. Next, we're gonna talk about Gladiator. If you've ever read a, uh, what do you call the uh, X-Men comic? You know who Gladiator is. He's basically a purple Shi'ar Superman with a mohawk. <laughs> His version of kryptonite is just his confidence. And almost nobody knows this, you know, but if you shake his confidence, he will slowly lose his powers as, you know, his confidence waxes and wanes. So he's a supremely confident guy, unbelievable. He, he fights for the Shi'ar Empire and anyone who is in the throne, even if it was there through uh, abdication or if someone came in and just usurped the throne, he, he, he follows whoever is sitting on the throne legally. So even if you overthrow, he's there. Uh, he's so ridiculously strong that he actually one time broke Hyperion's back. That's how strong this guy is, all right? Stronger than Superman, depends. But probably more invulnerable than Superman. As Again, as long as his confidence is there. He may not be as strong, but he is arguably a lot more invulnerable than him. Maybe almost twice as invulnerable, but... Either way, guys, next we're going to talk about Shazam, all right? Now he's in DC. He originally, when he was Captain Marvel, was not in Shazam. He was in National Comics, uh, excuse me, he, the comic Wiz Comics. Um, the, it was actually Fawcett Comics that he belonged to. I actually have a, a, a Hero in About a Minute, a, a Hero Explained in a Minute series with um, Shazam in it, if you want to know more about him. Either way, Shazam, he's got pretty much all the powers that Superman has, plus he's got the lightning abilities as opposed to, you know, heat vision. More importantly, his greatest strength is Superman's greatest weakness. He's got magic, all right? Not his greatest weakness, but whatever. The idea that Superman's invulnerability doesn't apply to Captain Marvel because he just his very punches are magical, so completely bypasses his armor for the most part. As long as he's lightning-induced. Oh, plus Superman has about a half resistance to lightning. So Captain Marvel is just, he's up there. So next we're going to talk about the century. And how could we not talk about the century? Right? A lot of people say this is the most Superman-like. Not so. Century is more than just a Superman ripoff. All right? Make no mistake. He is. He wouldn't be on this list if he weren't. But more than all of the same exact powers that Superman has... Sentry also has matter manipulation, all right? He's actually gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Molecule Man in changing the molecular structure and composite of all things around him. He can solidify the air around someone if he wanted to, and he's also a little loco en la cabeza. This guy, when he 
loses himself, all right? His, his biggest fear, his biggest weakness is himself. He's afraid of losing control. And if he ever does lose control, here's the crazy thing. He becomes more powerful. And I'm talking, if I said only 10 times more powerful, it would seriously be limiting just how powerful he actually becomes. He becomes the void, and it's literally his dark side. So his weakness is technically his greatest strength, except he's going to feel bad and cry in a dark corner afterwards because, oh no, look, I've just destroyed several worlds. But that's how powerful the century is. Guys, after this, let's talk about Mr. Majestic. Now, Mr. Majestic is basically exactly Superman, except that he is the the inverse. He's kind of like the bizarro version of Superman. You know what? Let's even say he's more like Red Sun Superman. All right? If you ever read uh, that Elseworlds imprint, it's basically Superman without a filter. He'll jail people without a trial just because, hey, I know he's a bad guy. That's enough. <laughs> you know? Very heavy-handed, cripples people. He actually, it's Wildcats uh, imprint, but they actually did a crossover where Superman actually met up with the main man himself, Superman, and Superman seriously chastised him on the way that he acts. And impressive, most impressive. Guys, let's let's next get into the Plutonian. The Plutonian is from the Boom Comics imprint, Boom Studios imprints specifically. The Plutonian is basically the almost the exact same story as Superman's. Very interesting character. Uh, his powers actually come from psionics rather than anything else uh so so the exact same powers except that it's all psychic so he makes himself invulnerable through his psionics he makes himself stronger through his psionics and he can actually make other people weaker with his psionics so they seem like all physical powers but they're actually powers of the mind he's not interested in trying to take over anybody's mind or anything like that but that's how his powers actually work <clears throat> and strong enough to move planets, all that good stuff. Finally, I believe finally, right? Yeah, out of eight, let's do Supreme. Now, Supreme, you may not know who he is. Uh, he comes from a different comic line in and of himself. Ba ba ba. I actually forgot which one. Uh, Max Press, <laughs> Awesome Entertainment, Arcade Comics. He's been all over the place, but for the most part, he is Image Comics. Always been. He's a creation of Rob Liefeld. What this guy did, let me just double check on that actually really quick because this is the one that I, he's been through so many different versions, uh, created by, yeah, Rob Liefeld. Okay. He's the only one I wasn't totally sure of, but I know him from the Alan Moore run. All right. At one point, you know, every so often you come into a character that you make and you say, you know what? I got to fix this character. So let me reinvent my own character. Rob Liefeld is a very smart guy. And what he did was he says, I'm going to reinvent uh, Supreme, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to turn it over to much more capable hands. And sometimes the most intelligent thing that we could do is to know who our betters are in a certain area, a certain field. And he knew that Alan Moore was a huge Superman fan. He, uh, with uh, whatever happened to the, the man of tomorrow, uh, that was the technically considered the last Silver Age comic ever written, even though it was way after Bronze Age. It was in modern age. But Alan Moore wrote the last Silver Age version of Superman because psh, that's who Alan Moore is, creator of the Watchmen, all that good stuff. So he turned the character over to Alan Moore and said, literally, take the character, do whatever you want to him. So... With much commentary, he changed the origin and everything else, including the powers of the character, so that he is basically Superman, but, you know, not. <laughs> and I'm mostly putting him here because of the story, because the, the, the rich history, his biggest power is that he was recreated by Alan Moore. <laughs> that actually means a lot, unless you don't believe so. So we've got these eight contenders, all right, and... Uh, below, you're going to see the, uh, what do you call it, the poll, all right? I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at this, and I want you to vote, all right? Everybody, you can vote more than once, why the hell not, you know what I'm saying? But this is going to be in tribute to the Battle Royal, and this is going to be the battle for the day, Sunday. All right, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, with a Geek Fortress exclusive, Glass Dismissed.